Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about a serious topic, a topic that is honestly trending right now in the New World community, and it is the state of New World. This video is going to be negative. This video is going to be truthful. It's going to be honest. So if you don't want to see any negativity, if you don't want to see any of that, you don't want to see, if you want to stay in your own sort of bubble and say that the game is fine, the game is good, well, you can quit off the video now because I'm going to hit the video very hard. This video comes from the POV or the point of view of someone that's put 4.5k hours plus into the game. Someone that has played PvP at the highest level possible on our server. I've played in a lot of high tier wars. I've done countless OPR matches or outpost rush matches. I've done countless arena matches. I've done my fair share of dungeons, but in general, uh, I'm more of what you would call me a PvP Andy. I'm someone that is more specialized in the PvP aspects of this game. So that's why a lot of the topics I'll be talking about are definitely more biased and aimed towards the PvP um, kind of community, which is honestly a community that's been very neglected. Another thing, I will have all the topics time stamped in the video so you guys can skip past and look for different topics that may interest you. But yeah, I've got plenty of things to talk about, guys. I could go over hours and hours into these topics, but I'm going to stay concise and to the point to all these topics. You may be wondering, hey, Invulnerable, with this negativity and this video that you are making right now, does that mean you are quitting the game? Does that mean you absolutely hate the game? No, I am not quitting. I'm still making content, I'm still going to be streaming, I'm still going to be playing and high level wars and doing my thing. This video is mainly to try and get the message across to the devs. Hopefully they take a moment to sit down and listen. Because this comes from also not just my POV, but also a lot of my friends that have played in high level wars. And in general, I feel like this will definitely hit home with a lot of the people in the PvP community, or maybe just in general, the New World community, because I will be talking about PvE stuff. Another thing to add, I love this game. I do love this game. There's a reason why I have 4,000 plus hours into this game. It has a place in my heart. I had some of the greatest moments in video gaming with this game, mainly with the social aspect of this game, I would say. But I had some great moments with this game. I've had fun times with honestly the combat system of this game. I mean, the combat system is not, no other. It's very unique and there's no other game like this. I don't see a game even being similar to this. So hopefully, hopefully Amazon pick up their shit and fix this game and give this game the love and time and take this game to the kind of potential that it was meant to be at. This game could have been amazing. And that is one of the biggest quotes I hear from people that have quit, people that even play this game, saying this game potentially could have been so good, but Amazon has dropped the ball and I'm not too sure what exactly it is. Is it management? Is it the devs incompetence? Is it the info that's getting being, is it the info that's being kind of sent to the devs through like the community management? I don't know what it is exactly, but this game has been handled very poorly. All right, guys. So let's start talking about the topics that I've kind of written down in notepads so or remind myself, um, cause there's a lot of things I want to talk about here. Let's talk about the elephant in the room or something that, uh, is a problem right now. Season four, season four was terrible. A lot of cut content. Basically there was no content at all. All there was, was the new dungeon that I have not done. Apparently this dungeon in general is not even that great. It's a lot of copy and paste and stuff. And there was also a bunch of artifacts that were added as content when most of these artifacts are not even used at all. One of them that was used, especially early on was Boltcaster. Now I didn't play the full season four. I kind of quit when season four came out because honestly there was just no content that was being released, nothing for a PVP -er. So I moved on to a different game. But from what I heard, Boltcaster was completely breaking the game. It was legit bugged. It had bugged damage that I don't exactly know how it worked, but it was doing insane amount of damage and it controlled the meta. So not them just adding a lot of bad artifacts that did nothing. The Boltcaster was added and it broke the game and they left it in there for, I'm not exactly, exactly sure. I heard my friends say it was left in there for a month. Again, I may be wrong on that, but it was left in there for a while. It was breaking the game. 
and they had to just completely disable the weapon or disable the actual effect. I'm not sure what they did. Again, I wasn't playing for the whole season. And now it is finally fixed, so that's good. But season four in general was terrible. There was nothing added. Completely Amazon have dropped the ball with season four. And this also ties into another thing I want to talk about. New, most new seasons besides season three, all they do basically is they add a dungeon. I personally don't think enough changes in between the seasons. The only season that I think a lot changed and was I had a lot of fun with for a few weeks in that season was because it was a paid expansion. And honestly, I enjoyed the expansion. I was happy. But even the expansion was, in my opinion, kind of lackluster. It added a new continent that is not even really used anymore. You kind of go there, do the quest line, you do a few things, farm artifacts, and you're done. The, the actual, like... Place. I haven't been there for I haven't been there in like months. The place is extremely useless for me. But that it is what it is. A lot of the stuff in the expansion actually was more reworks to systems. Like for example, the gearing up system and how like they removed dumbbell shards and a bunch of other stuff, a bunch of balance changes. They added the artifacts in for the first time, so that was really cool. But yeah, in general, I just think a lot of the seasons are quite lackluster besides perhaps season three. If more of the seasons were like season three. I think that would be awesome, but I don't expect that. All right, so besides kind of season four, Amazon completely dropping the ball on it and not having basically no content, nothing nothing changed basically from season three to season four. We'll talk about the next topic. Now with the artifacts that were introduced basically in season three and they added every season, there is a few artifacts that I think are terribly designed and that are kind of mandatory for a lot of builds. For example, featherweight and void dark plate now hear me out before you freak out and say what well, those are really strong this and that blah 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 i'm not talking about how strong they are and actually no i am kind of talking about how strong they are but i want to talk about the design void dark plate now you know it's actually funny i don't even have void dark plate i use tumblers on my other builds because i, I honestly can't be bothered to farm uh dungeons in general i, I know i'm lazy i'm lazy all right but void dark plate one of the more mandatory items that a lot of kind of heavy builds use or medium builds. What does it do? It increases your armor by 20%. That is the effect, or I think that's what it does exactly. It basically increases your armor by a certain percent, right? That is boring. That is terrible. Artifacts are meant to be, they're meant to have special interesting effects that change the game. Adding 20% armor, which is, it just makes Void Dark Plate one of the strongest artifacts. It's just not, it's not fun. It's not interesting. It's just, kind of terribly balanced and this also goes down to featherweight if you play i don't know how many builds use featherweight i think healers use featherweight um light melees have to use featherweight but there's so many builds that kind of need to use featherweight because if you're not you're trolling featherweight is extremely strong and is the only reason why like light melee for example can even be viable i know some certain people have weird niche builds of like tumblers and stuff but in general most people will use featherweight and a lot of builds i just in general think some of the artifacts are just terribly designed need to be nerfed or reworked or something or something in the game needs to be reworked artifacts are meant to be cool i think a good example of a cool artifact is scorpion sting i think scorpion sting is a pretty strong playstyle. It completely changes the Spears playstyle in general, with the whole Javelin playstyle. I also think it's really cool being able to kind of pull enemies as like kind of a hook. I don't know. I think it's flavorful. I think it's a really cool weapon. It is one of, it's also used in one of my main builds. I love Scorpion Sting. I know some people hate being scorpioned or javelined with it. I know it sucks, but it's a very well designed, one of the best designed artifacts in my opinion. You guys must disagree with that, but that is my opinion on it. Besides artifacts, balance changes take way too long to come into the game. For example, some of the most notorious times in New World, the musket and the old greatsword. Old musket was broken for, I think it was a year plus. It was so broken and also is in combination with mortal empowerment being broken for a very long time but musket with mortal empowerment was absolutely broken and if anyone played opr or wars at the time that musket existed when it used to be hit scan people will know 
it was probably the most broken thing in New Odds history. And it took them way too long to fix it. It made plenty of my friends quit the game and they never returned. Because the game was not fun. You would go into Outpost Rush and the enemy team would have 10 muskets and they controlled the entire map. Because all you had to do was hide inside a fort and you peeked for a second, two muskets shoot you, you're dead. It was the Dark Ages for Balance in New World and it took them way too long to fix it. Way too long. These days, I'm actually all right with the state of musket. I'm actually all right with it. For me personally, it doesn't bother me too much. It's still annoying to deal with, but it's not like OP OP like it used to be. Also, as a great sword or an assassin player myself, a great sword or great sword was busted. It was the bane of existence for a lot of healer players. If you healed through the great sword and musket days, you, you must have came out of that like a, a god tier healer. Because, wow, great sword was busted. And I know because I used it. But yeah, in general, it just took them way too long. It takes them way too long to fix stuff in the game when it comes to balancing. And in general, just fixes for this game in general. And I'm going to be going over a lot of... Uh, problems this game has and it should have been fixed a while ago or was fixed way too late for example pve nerf in outpost rush now i know they are fixing it in season five but repairing doors specifically in pve i do not mind the other aspects of pve in outpost rush the door repairing though was obviously extremely busted. The whole Reddit, I saw on Reddit at some point, I don't really look at Reddit that much, but I saw on Reddit, at some points, just so many people complaining about the kind of state of door repairing in Outpost Rush. I have plenty of like clips and moments on my Twitch channel. Also on other Twitch channels, there's plenty of moments where you, you see 10 people hitting a door with a brute also hitting the door and we can't break the door because the guy is just spamming resources on a door, holding E, repairing a door, and we can't break through. That is broken. There is also some points in kind of New World's life cycle where they actually buffed door repairing and all that. Where, for example, people drop half their resources instead of dropping all their resources. Honestly, when they buffed PvE in Outpost Rush, I lost a lot of hope in AGS. What in the right mind were they thinking of buffing the one thing everyone wanted removed from the game? Besides maybe a few players that are honestly have problems if they want to go to a door and spam E the whole time in a damn PvP mode. One of the few PvP modes that exist in the game. Anyway, besides all that, they are finally nerfing it after two years of suffering. They're finally nerfing it in Season 5. I don't know 100% the, ex the extent of the nerfs. I don't know if it's enough because it was so busted, but I hope that it will be enough to finally make it balanced. Now, talking about nerfs, the Arena PvP Track XP nerf. So, when Season 3 came out and they introduced artifacts through the PvP Track, a lot of players were spamming arenas. The reason they were spamming arenas was because they gave a lot of XP. There was also uh, certain groups where they would say, want to queue 3v3 so they can kind of abuse the PvP XP system. So I understand perhaps why they may have nerfed it to kind of stop the abuse of getting your PvP track, like getting quick levels. So I can kind of understand from their POV a little bit if I'm really thinking about from their point of view. But them completely butchering XP from arenas without compensating with a new system or new loot that you can get from arenas. Like there is no point in queuing arenas. Now with there being no point in queuing arenas besides having fun, it's at least on our server completely killed arenas. I have to wait in like 30 minutes queue, 30 minute queues to even get one arena. And usually this arena lasts like two minutes or something or like a minute because it's just a terrible quality arena and it's just a stomp or I don't know, nothing. It's just not that interesting. So waiting for 30 minutes to queue for one shitty arena, man, that sucks. When you go into New World, for example, right? <clears throat> you press escape as a new player, right? or as a player in general, you click on activities, you feel like doing something. Maybe you feel like doing some PVP. So you go to activities. The first thing you see is 3v3 arenas. 
the only one of the only two modes of pvp besides war that you could have casual pvp fun in and they've completely killed arenas at least on our server i'm not too sure what it's like on eu and na but on asia pacific delos you cannot find it in arena queue so that's absolutely depressing they've decided hey we're gonna up the up the xp and outburst rush so you we want you guys to queue outburst rush but i'll be honest outburst rush and i'll be talking about this is terrible it's not fun for a lot of players and the only reason a lot of us go into it because it's the only casual pvp in the game basically but yeah later i'm gonna go into more on to the outpost rush section or like topic that's a huge topic to talk about i want to move into more with the the pvp track the pvp track is terrible the only useful things are basically the artifacts and once you got the artifacts most of the things like 95 percent of the items you see when it comes to actual like gear is worthless why are items looked at 675 well, why are most items looked at 675 they should be minimum 690 and going up to 700 why does it hurt it's a pv look let's go let's go to right now let's go to the pvp track i've got nothing over here right we I mean, look at this item what is that firstly this is probably one of the worst items so this is kind of a bad example but in general you'll find most items being really just bad like it is pointless you go to a mar the marketplace and buy a 700 piece for like pretty cheap and it's just going to be better than whatever this shit is this is a end game pvp system we should be able to gear up through this this is the way pvpers should be able to gear up and this will lead into another point why not make dark make all these items upgradable with dark matter kind of like how umber shards used to work make the pvp track upgradable with dark matter dark matter if we look at my inventory right now right let's go look up dark matter Look how much dark matter I'm sitting on. This stuff is useless for me. When you do the initial upgrades in the start of your character, this stuff is useless. There's no sync for dark matter. Give us a PvP. Give the PvP track gear. Give us the ability to upgrade the PvP track gear with dark matter. Or just fix the PvP track gear. Why is it 675? No one's going to use it. No one. It's an end game system that PvPers, again, we need some way to gear up. PvP right now, if you just play PvP and do outpost rush and arenas and just do races and all this stuff or wars, you cannot gear up in this game. It is not possible to gear up at the level that you need to gear up for this stuff. This also forces a lot of end game PvPers that only play PvP to RMT for gold. This forces them to RMT, to be able to be competitive in gear, because you just don't earn enough through PvP. Uh, you don't go, you don't get any gear upgrades through PvP. You're screwed. You even need to PvE or RMT or G2G, for example. Also, when it comes to gearing up, the crates you get from Outpost Rush and War are terrible i have so many crates sitting here because i'm waiting for the day they buff these these crates i've got 620 opus rush crates 620 sitting here because i'm waiting for the day that they will finally fix that damn system and buff this stuff because it is terrible you can't gear up through this shit this stuff is terrible these crates are bad I haven't, op I haven't opened them for a very long time, right? But apparently you can get 620 gear from these crates, according to my friend. You can get 620. What is that? What a joke. Allow us to either, like, upgrade this gear with the dark matter, give another reason to use dark matter, or, like, give us just actual decent loot from these. These war crates should be awesome. I should get some of the end game like, I should get some BIS endgame gear eventually from these war crates because this is like the, the elitist end game hardcore content anyhow the gear should that drops from here should be 690 minimum in my opinion and perhaps you can upgrade it with dark matter 
All right, next, we're gonna talk a bit more about Outpost Rush. The order balancing needs to exist. And I'm talking mainly with pre-mates. If you queue with five people and another, and there's another five-man group and there's only like two five-man groups, right? They should be put on separate teams to auto balance. The auto balancing system is terrible in Outpost Rush. Most Outpost Rushes are stomps. That needs to be fixed. And there's no, I haven't heard of anything about them trying to fix this stuff. Most Outpost Rushes are terrible. The way, the, the actual game mode itself, I think, I don't have a real good solution for this, but there needs to be some reworks involved because the actual mode itself is not great. It's most of the time just terrible quality. You'll see from my streams, I don't enjoy most of these outpost rushes. Um, the only time I really enjoy outpost rushes is when I play like kind of a new build and I'm experimenting with a new build. That's the only time I really enjoy the mode. It's just the only thing I can do for PvP in the game because arenas are dead and there's just no other PvP options. You have arenas, you sit in Windswood and you queue arenas and OPR. Another cool idea about outpost rush and i wish they did something like this is seasonally themed outpost rushes and what do i mean by this if we remember from season one for example right when they introduced the worm raid i think there was a missed opportunity i think the outpost rush map should have turned into a, like a desert version of the outpost rush map and for example change the baron into the worm and maybe for example the worm to kill the worm it travels to different locations throughout the map and you have to follow it around and kill it eventually. There's like different stages or something and there's like PvP in between and it'd be kind of a cool dynamic. Just also perhaps even, for example, there are certain parts, uh, certain times of the Outpost Rush where there's a sandstorm and you have to get inside the forts to not take tick damage from the outside because you, you eventually die from being outside in the sandstorm. Just really cool seasonal theme ideas for outpost rush map uh, for outpost rush every season if they want to stick with one basically one pvp mode that casuals go to or whatever which is the outpost rush if they want to stick to it they need to fundamentally rework it every season this will make players come back to the game and it also adds an awesome bit of flavor to the season like for example the reason season was a snowy season why not just make the outpost rush a snowy map Change it every season. We need that stuff. It's so stale in Outpost Rush. It doesn't ever get changed. And finally, again, going back to my other point, they finally know for the PvE, so that's something nice. We're looking forward after two years of waiting for the nerf PvE or door repairing specifically. Anyhow, there's a lot of things I could talk about when it comes to Outpost Rush, but again, we're keeping this concise and specific and generalized. Let's talk about something a bit different. Now, this is something that I got from some Hilo friends. I don't really know too much about this, so I won't go into too much detail about this, but raid healing is broken, and it has been broken ever since the raid system was introduced. It is busted. Apparently, you can't target your people in your group or something. It's very weird. I don't, I, I don't know. I'm not a healer, so I don't really truly understand this. So I don't know why they haven't fixed this. Or haven't found a solution to fix raid healing. Another thing. So again, I don't know too much about this, but scroll healing. I know a lot of healers may know this. This hasn't been fixed before seasons existed. Before I don't know when it was broken. They have to, they introduced a new update that broke it, and they didn't fix it. And I know actually a lot of healers that stopped playing healing because they preferred scroll healing for fun and all that stuff. Like. I don't even know what scrolling is exactly. I just hear it a bunch, this keyword, and a lot of people enjoyed this, but they haven't fixed it. It's broken. It doesn't work. All right. Now I've talked about a few topics when it comes to like outpost rush and PvP and a bit of gear upgrading from PvP, how it's not possible to realistically upgrade your gear for just PvP. I'm talking about something a little different. Invasions are terrible. They suck. They should be the big elitist where the top PvEers gather up and defend a town. They should be the endgame PvE. Like how wars are the PvPers endgame. And honestly, it's the only thing that's actually enjoyable in the game, by the way, which is warring. But yeah, invasions, for example, 
our company pays a different company called i think it's invasions or us we pay them to actually do our invasions because no one wants to do the invasions it is so hard to even fill up the invasion roster because invasions are not fun they're easy they are brain dead they are boring how can they fix this one of the true like end game systems of new world how can they fix this in my mind i think invasions need a full rework like a full-on rework in my mind as a rework invasions shouldn't be based in the same kind of fort that like wars are hosted invasions for example should be defending your town from the corrupted as an example what if you go to let's say like you're defending brimstone from the corrupted and you actually have to defend the town's buildings from massive waves of corrupted and you have to and maybe it's all randomly generated where they come from and this and that and there's different strategies and it's really hard it should be hard and let's say perhaps you lose or you lose a lot of buildings in the process of winning for example what can happen um is for example this can bring the town ball missions into this where you have to repair the town from because of the corrupted have destroyed the town so for example a lot of people have to gather up and do town ball missions to repair the facilities of the town so you can use all the systems that the town provides another maybe wacky idea if you lose the invasion i think the town shouldn't be functionable for a certain amount of time i it would be cool for example if you see on the map for example right let's go to the map right imagine you see brimstone here like you see these little portals here with the red here imagine this whole zone turns red like and you cannot use the town or every if you go into the town you get attacked by corrupted and stuff and i don't know you take a lot of damage if you go in the town i know this is maybe a bit wild a bit out there but it's kind of cool ideas like that you know that like the invasion took over the lands and that there's portals everywhere and that maybe there's a certain events you can go to where perhaps it could even be pvp events in these zones where you, there's like pockets of pvp where um you have to do certain things to take back this the city or like the territory i don't know i think that sounds cool to me personally a lot of flavor involved but no instead you defend the same fort you do you use in pvp and for some reason the corrupted attack your fort and when they attack it you lose you downgrade some of the things in your town it's just kind of boring and the actual invasion system itself is boring and easy and brain dead and i haven't been to an invasion for a while because they're just terrible and i think that is bad because invasions are kind of a a huge end game system the end game system to pve or at least one of them also on a side note invasions should be a different timer to wars because sometimes wars clash with invasions and it's kind of awkward but besides invasions needing a full-on rework and just cut it out and plant in a new system let's talk about the fact that there's no new pvp game modes or events or even like no new outpost rush map but honestly you can keep the outpost rush mode just add a new pvp mode like a king of the hill look okay so if the devs don't want to put in the time to damn put in pvp content for us why not for example add a new mode a king of the hill mode or like a team deathmatch mode where they literally copy and paste certain parts of the map for example morganstadt what if you look at this what if a team started right here a team started right here this is the respawns for example i don't know i don't really know specifics for this and you have to hold this area here and it's just a team deathmatch for a king of the hill map and why not just add a rotating mode every hour change the map and it goes to different parts like reuse certain parts of the world you don't have to put in a lot of effort to this to only need a queuing system or whatever right and i think a lot of people will have fun with this it's reusing you don't have to make new content just a new queuing system like a new server or whatever right why not just reuse the stuff like isn't that just a lazy way to look that's all pvpers ask is something new something different and you can again reuse assets and parts of the open world which is kind of cool it's kind of cool that you get to see like some of these places like morgastat which is used like once when you go through 
a main quest line or something, why not just reuse this as PvP areas? That's kind of cool. Also, you know when they add in certain events, like the Christmas event, for example, or um, the Halloween event, why is it all just PvE? Why can't you add also a PvP twist? I had both, like a PvP and PvE twist, or maybe separate wards or whatever, right? For example, they could even add it like on the Christmas event. Why not add a snowball fight to the game? Something just fun PvP mode where, you, like, why don't they have fun with this? Why are the events also damn reused every year and nothing changes about them? The Christmas event has been the same thing. The Halloween event has been the same thing every year. Why not change it? You what? Stop being lazy and change your events at least. Why is every event PvE? Why do you not care about us PvPers? I think it's good to have both content and you guys neglect us with this stuff. Where's the PvP events? Also, another thing to talk about is why is there no war practice mode? Why can't... Okay, now this is mainly aimed towards, I would say, the people that want to get into the warring scene. There are a lot of veterans that play it in, the, in wars and stuff. And they also have alts that play in these wars, and it, it is tough for a new player to get into warring. It's hard to get into a roster because if you perform terribly in the roster, you might get kicked out and you can't find any war slots anywhere in any company. Why not add a war practice mode? Or like a war a queuable war mode where you get put on two random teams and you guys just get to have practice wars or whatever. Let the new people, the new players, get involved in the warring scene and try to get better at it and learn how to war before getting into the actual juice, the actual wars, which is, you know, taking over the territories, which is very important for a lot of companies, right? I feel sorry for the new players. How the hell are they meant to get into the warring scene? It is rough. There is a lot of things you need to learn about the aspects of war. It is very complicated. It is actually very difficult, especially at a high level. There's a lot of skill required, a lot of new aspects to the game that you need to learn, which is team play and and listen to com and uh, communication between your team and the main shot caller and the other groups. And there's so many aspects to the game, and also like <clears throat> using consumables correctly, learning how to position yourself in wars, when to push and pull, when to bomb certain clumps, and there's so much involved I could talk about it forever. There needs to be a practice warring system for newer players. Also for people that actually just want to casually play a war and like enjoy wars, but don't want to, want to be that sweaty and that stressful. And not a lot of players don't want to war because it's too stressful for them. They have a lot of anxiety, they have a lot of war anxiety and don't want to do it. Give them access to a war practice system. Talking about PvP. Now, I have an idea of a new system that I think would be awesome for the game. And I think would fit the game pretty well. There's a, I have a few different ideas here, right? So I think the open world needs to be more alive. I think there needs to be dynamic events throughout the world and little pockets around the world Kind of like how events, uh, there's this main, like, the turkey events and the egg events where people go around the world and do stuff. People enjoy that stuff. People enjoy socializing through these events. Why not add pockets throughout the world? Now, this could be PvE and PvP events that go throughout the world. I think this should be both. And they both come with, like, maybe a separate currency or something that gives us access to a new type of shop, which you can buy... I don't know, some skins or some sort of new progression system. So maybe a new PvP progression system for the PvP events where people have to uh, go throughout the world and do these events. I think that's just kind of a cool, not too complicated to add system. Or maybe it's not, it's, it's quite complicated because it's dynamic throughout the board, but it's, it's kind of also reusing assets and all this stuff. Like just allow the open world to thrive. Give us little events everywhere where we have to move around and fight each other and also um when it comes to pvp in my opinion i think shattered mountain that now this may be a hot take i think this should have been a full pvp zone i think there should have been a separate also currency that is for example right 
let's say you go into the zone and let's say these are like extra uh, extraction not extraction zones but you need to extract a certain resource you have to defend these kind of they're not portals just think of think of them as something else right and you have to extract with this resource at certain outposts or whatever right and if you die, you lose those resources and then people can turn it in for themselves. So there's a bit of like risk and reward. I think risk and reward can be cool. I know some people want full loot PVP in the game. And I've heard a lot of comments. I think that's not, I don't think it suits this game and how gearing works in this game. I don't think it suits it. But I think you can have a middle ground where there is, you can farm resources to take to a PVP vendor for PVP gear or whatever it is, right? You can have a middle ground and if someone if you get killed while in the zones yeah without extracting you lose all the resources so there's a bit of risk uh versus reward maybe there's like rare resources where you may drop them as well and it becomes and maybe it shows up on the map and everyone's like rushing towards to get it and there's huge pvp battles and there's so much cool things they could do with this game when it comes to pvp but they just i don't know what is happening at ags all right, guys, so let's talk about something also a little bit different here, which is guilds, or oh, companies, sorry. Companies and the social aspect of this game is what has carried this game in a certain aspect. I think a lot of people can agree, without the social aspect of this game, this game would be pretty much dead. The social aspects and the sandbox nature of it has carried this game. People just love to socialize in this game. It just kind of works. They did a great job with the social aspects of this game and like how it feels to socialize and all that. Also with the open mic and I just feel that the company system is trash. I feel personally there should be a guild housing or guild hall with a guild storage. Sorry, I keep saying guild. I'm thinking of different games here, but company storage, you like company missions, for example, you have to kill 10,000 lost in the open world. And then you gain progression and you build up your company for levels and it's going to have its own company currency where you can buy skins, you can buy resources, whatever it is, maybe a new type of progression system. There should be a company progression system and companies should be expanded into something larger than what it is. It is one of the things that has carried this game pretty heavily. And why had they have it honed into the company system and up? and updated it to be like just way cooler in general it's beyond me and this is going to lead also into perhaps a hot take of mine now a lot of people will disagree with this maybe some people will agree i personally have thought since the game before it came out this game should have been factionless this game should be company versus company not faction v faction if you look at the map Luckily, well, right now, the yellow is kind of taking control, or the covenant is taking control, but in general, it looks all right. I just think these colors shouldn't exist. I think it should be, for example, let's say the, the company I'm in, Clapping Cheeks versus, we can verse season three. We should be able to do this. Also, there's certain aspects where people get stuck in, um, stuck in a certain, like, faction, and they can't leave for, like, three months, and they're screwed that. I know a lot of people that actually quit the game, and don't come back because they're stuck in a faction and there's no company to join for them. It's a dead faction or whatever, so they're stuck. I know a lot of people would say, for example, but there's a lot of, like, rewards involved with faction stuff or whatever, right? Just add, the, add, the fa add the, all the faction rewards, add that into, like, uh, I'm not too sure what the solution is. There could be a lot of different solutions to this, but add it into the game that's not tied to factions. Just add it into the game. Add it into, like, uh, some sort of this progression system or something but yeah i just think the faction system is just unnecessary and it should be just company v company in my opinion i mean you guys can talk about this you guys can disagree with me that's absolutely fine i just feel that's personally the case i also feel when the game was absolutely popping if you, if a lot of you guys i played on release right and a lot of the servers were controlled by full purple full yellow full green and controlled by one faction I just, I don't know, faction imbalance was definitely a problem early on. Luckily, it's okay on our server now, but yeah, I just, I just don't like, I'm just not a huge fan of the whole, um, the free factions. All right, guys, so let's talk about the sinks in the game. Two specific sinks I'm thinking of, right? Dark matter and gold. Firstly, and I've talked about this previously, dark matter needs some sort of sink. You need to, they, like, I have around 10k dark matter. I've got nothing to, I've had... I haven't been able to use Dark Matter for a while. You kind of need it in the start and of gearing up and then 
you don't need it anymore it's useless it builds up you get it from different aspects of the game quite a bit it's useless there needs to be a sync for dark matter or a progression system or you should be able to upgrade your gear kind of like how umbral shards used to be with dark matter or at least certain types of gear okay and talking about gold sinks in this game the server at least i'm on is having an issue where there's not enough gold perhaps in the economy there is too many money sinks where the people aren't earning enough money because also the game dying and stuff people are doing less content that gives us gold so it's a serious problem for example a lot of uh, a lot of players they buy chromatic seals that's 5k they buy an inductor it's 25k and that money is going into a an abyss an avoid a void i've spent so much money on on chromatic seals and inductors and i just don't own enough money in game especially as a pvp you just don't own any money realistically I just think there's just too many money sinks and it's kind of a problem for the game. I think this is a huge topic and there's more to go into this, but it's just something I kind of wanted to go over a little bit at least. I just think, yeah, not good. Uh, talking about kind of, I guess, making money and the money subject, um, mutation, uh, at least like specifically mutation free. Now, I haven't done this stuff for a while. If I am wrong on this, I've uh, weirdly enough, I've heard different actually opinions uh, from this. But there was one general opinion I heard quite a bit was there is not enough BOEs you get from mutation free. There is no reason to grind mutation free because most of the items are bind on pickup, not bind on equip. I feel personally most items should be BOE from mutation free. So it makes it so there's a reason to grind mutation free. The, one of the harder, I guess, PVE content in the game. You should be able to grind it then sell the BOEs to the marketplace. And yeah, it just gives like an or like, like maybe even I would farm mutation fruits. I have a reason to farm them all of a sudden because I'm making money. I don't know. I just feel like there should be more BOEs. If I'm wrong on this, by the way, you guys can say, I don't really, I'm not a PV expert. I've just been talking to some people about it and I'm like, yeah, okay, that makes sense. You know, I agree. And also to go back on one thing real quick about kind of money and stuff. A lot of people are forced, and I'll be honest, a lot of people are forced to RMT for gold, also known as real money trading, which is basically going to certain websites and buying gold um, kind of illegally in a way. Because a lot of people just can't make enough money in the game and there's not enough ways to make money, perhaps, or this and that, and people are struggling to buy their chromatic seal or inductor, especially PvPers, so they go, they resort to having to RMT. All right, so besides the gold sinks and the kind of the, the dungeon stuff and the, just the sinks in general, let's talk about something that's more of a, I guess, a recent system to New World, which is the mount system. I think the mount system in this game is shit. I think it's bare bones. It has a good structure to it. Like, realistically, the mount feels decent. It looks good. The animations are good. You know, it doesn't feel bad to run on a mount. But all it really is, is a mount with a riding skill that is basically maxed and you can max it out in a day, like sim like easily without, you know, sinking money or whatever into it. It's like super easy. And it's just not like anything interesting when it comes to mounts. There's no like, um, there's also not really that many cool mounts. They can like, like dragon mounts maybe, or like just cool mounts that are like, just look cool. Like the mounts, such as the mount system is very bare bones. There's been bare bones since season three, the start of season three. It's been bare bones for a while. There's, there's been no updates to the mount system. Nothing interesting. I don't know. I just feel like they could also add mount skills if they want to go further with mounts, add a whole new progression system with mount skills and just cool stuff with mounts. I just think mounts are just boring in this game. Besides mounts, going over to something that's perhaps not as maybe important as the previous topics, which is the die system. There's, there's, two, there's a few aspects to this, right? Firstly, dying in this game is very inconsistent it's extremely inconsistent now what i mean by this let's say we die i don't know i'm gonna look at my chest piece right <clears throat> okay let's go to the metal piece here okay so the metal piece right you see how like you can see the kind of gold here and like this is the default colors right you see the gold here when you try to dye this black look what happens why can't I die the gold piece specifically? Why does it die the whole thing? And, and that's not it. If I, for example, go to show all, look what happens with some of the dies. 
Why can I see the gold bit on some of the dies, but then some of the dies completely die it? What is wrong with the dying system in this game? It is broken. It's super inconsistent. And this is, I know a lot of people will uh, know about this from their struggles with trying to do transmog and dies and all the stuff. But yeah, just please fix your dying system. It is extremely inconsistent um, and it is frustrating. Also, before you use the transmog token on a piece of gear, you should be able to preview dies on it because I've made mistakes and wasted transmog tokens and pieces realizing you can't die certain pieces of that armor or it looks terrible with dies. Also, to add a side thing, where the hell is black die? <laughs> where there's no black die in the game and it's depressing to me. I think a lot of people would pay a lot of money for black die. For example, let's just remove this, right? Remove this blue die. This is the default black. This is the default die for this. I like this black. It's cool. The darkest black we have in the game is this. What is that? That's gray. And also this gray, like this is sometimes darker on different pieces. Again, leading into the whole inconsistency of dyes in general. Um, but yeah, like there's just no black dye. Where is black dye? Give us black dye. You have pure white dye. Thank you. Thank you for having pure white dye. But where's the black dye? Um, also, something that I think could be a cool system in this game that hasn't been added yet to it is a companion or pet system. I know this is not like, uh, I'm asking for just kind of, this is a cool content idea, right? I'm not going to even go into more content ideas like boat content and ocean content, but we're not going to go on to that, right? We're talking about trying to fix up the game first before adding stuff. Adding a pen and companion system could be a cool thing. I think it's, I think a lot of MMOs and games have it in general. I think it'd be kind of cool to add a pet and companion system or like a, something that follows you around. I think they could also sell skins or sell companions on the, like, on the in-game store and make some money. Like some of the stuff you can monetize and make money off, right? Also, the black dye is, you can make a lot of money off that. Just saying, you add black dye, you make a lot of money. That's all I'm saying, man. Um, besides the kind of stuff that's, I would say, not super important compared to some of the previous topics, I want to talk about a few things that don't get fixed in the game, like bugs. For example, the friends list bug. Now, I heard it got fixed recently, or I don't know when they fixed it, but for the longest time, the friends list, at least if it's not bugged right now, it's been fixed, was bugged forever, years. The friends list since the start of the game has been bugged. That is pathetic. That is pathetic. Friends list, small little things in the game that have been bugged for years and have been fixed. That is pathetic. And it makes me just miserable because the small little things mean a lot to a game. All the small things, all the quality of life stuff means a lot to a game. And it takes them way too long to fix this stuff. Also, you can DM offline people why can you do this? If it popped up with a message when they when they log back on and they can see a message that they received while they're offline, okay, I can see that. They don't get that though. Why can I deem offline people? Sometimes I can see they're online. It's this is I don't know if it's a bug or I don't know what it is, but they're actually not. I DM them and I'm like, oh, waiting for an answer. They're offline though. I'm like, oh. <laughs> anyway, just a small thing like that. Small things, bugs are just so stupid. That need to be fixed. Also, titles. I don't see, I can't show you right now. I mean, I could, but anyhow. A lot of you guys that play the game, if you can play Outpost Rush or if it happens a few times in different aspects, the titles, it says you receive this title constantly on the right screen, on the right side of your screen. It is extremely annoying. It has been broken for a while. Fix this. It is a pain in our ass to see this damn, oh, you've earned this title 20,000 times on the right side of your screen every time you queue into an Outpost Rush match or you leave it. Fix it. But it seems to be a weird deep coding issue. I can go into the whole coding issue of this game, but I don't know too much about coding, so I'm just not gonna go into it. The coding obviously in this game is terrible. The optimization in this game is terrible, but it's, uh, it's another long topic, a different video to talk about. There's also a few bugs that I deal with as my weapons. For example, the, the SNS punching bug. If anyone plays SNS, you would understand this. If you, uh, I don't know how exactly it works. You, you drink a potion too fast with doing something on an SNS, you start punching randomly, and it actually screwed me over quite a few times. You start punching the air, because I don't know, you, your animation gets bugged with the potion. It's the thing that's been an issue for a while and hasn't been fixed. There's also, for example, the hatchet cancel bug, where I'm gonna show you guys, actually right now, I'm gonna show you guys. A lot of you guys that play Hatchet may understand. <clears throat> so let's say this, right? A lot of what things people used to do in the past, 
was called berserk cancelling, right? Which is like doing a certain like, uh, for, for example, I'm gonna show you right now, right? So I'm gonna dash. I just did the attack berserk cancel, right? So basically canceled the animation. Um, it is still exists in the game. And you may be thinking, oh, you're actually berserked right now. You see the animation, you see the little like thing at the bottom. No, you're actually not. It's a visual bug, but it puts the ability on cooldown. It is actually a problem because when you're stunned and you press, um, <clears throat> and you press like, for me at least, I berserk out of it, it cancels the animation and basically it screws me over. It uses my berserk and I don't have the effect of berserk. I don't know. Just small things here and there that they need to fix. The fact that they haven't been able to fix the berserk cancel thing, like they can't fix it. Just bring it back to what it was before in the past. It's just these, there's plenty of things we could talk about, plenty of bugs that still exist that have been existing since the start of the game, but that would take forever because there's plenty of bugs in this game and this game is coded to shit. All right, guys. So I honestly probably missed quite a few topics we could talk about. I can also talk about more things and give more suggestions on how they could fix the game, but this video would last way too long. Um, I don't know how long this video is in general. It's probably a very extremely long video, but I had to make this video. I have a, I have love for this game. I want this game to be fixed. I truly want this game to be fixed. And I hope AGS pull their head out of wherever they're, wherever it is out of their asses and fix the game and bring it to the potential that it should have been. There are so many problems in this game and these devs, I don't know what is happening exactly, AGS. I don't know what is happening with you guys. Maybe it's just hopium and copium to think that this game may be amazing at some point because honestly, I've lost faith in the devs. I'm going to keep looking. I'm going to be skeptical. I'm going to hold hope. But I don't know, guys. This has been a long video. Hope you guys... I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, I know it was very quite negative in general, um, but there is a lot of things to talk about with this game and its issues. Hopefully this also, hopefully people kind of learn if they're kind of new to the game about issues in this game that they may face perhaps in the future because um, as a new player, you may not be facing a lot of these issues, but you will face these issues, at least some of these issues. But yeah, guys, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to check out the Twitch channel. I stream like basically every day. Um, so yeah, thanks guys for watching and hopefully this game can be fixed. Peace out.